I keep telling you in my videos how to make certain D&D concepts in GURPS, but what about actual adventures? You have all the game mechanics worked out, but now you have to put them into play. You might have an idea for an adventure, or you might have nothing on your mind at all. In this video I will show you an example of adventure preparation from scratch. There's tons of jamming advice online in the form of books, articles and blog posts, and there are many styles of GMing. How to be a GURPS GM actually has an interesting chapter on adventure creation that might be useful to new GMs, so I highly recommend you to read it. If, however, you are struggling with coming up with the actual plotline, consider getting the Adventure Crafter. This uh, system agnostic book is a good GMing aid. It can even be combined with Mythic GM Emulator for solo games. This is how I ran my previous adventure, so I'd like to try it again. If I like the result, I will run it for my players, so if you are one of my players, please stop watching this video. First, if you are using Adventure Crafter, you have to determine your game's priorities. You can either assign them yourself or determine them randomly. I'll do it randomly. Here's what I got. Social, Tension, Mystery, Action, Personal. This is interesting. I have never had games where the social theme was the primary one. But let's go along with this. The next thing you should do is to make two lists. A plotline list and a character list. Both are empty. I haven't generated any plotlines yet and my players haven't created their characters. So let's roll our first turning point that will generate our first plotline. First, we determine the theme randomly, then the plot point. I rolled some dice and got the following themes and plot points. Tension – menacing tone. Social – a group is in trouble. Tension – meta – character returns. Mystery – none. Mystery – something exotic. Two of these plot points require us to introduce characters. A group is in trouble tells me to determine which character is in power to resolve these situations, so I will assume that it's one of the player characters that uh, haven't been generated yet. Character Returns tells me to introduce a new character if there are no actual characters to return, so let's get to it. Adventure Crafter has some tables that will help me determine the role the new character plays in the adventure. I'll have to roll the special trait, character identity and character description. The special trait I got is the character is connected to this plotline, identity is deliverer and descriptor is confident. But even with all that, I have to decide where the game's events are taking place and who the threatened group is. I wanted to run an underwater game for a long time, so I will assume that the events are taking place in an undersea settlement. But what about the group? To help with that, let's open up Mythic GM Emulator and just make some rolls on the action tables. I got the following – increase food. The first thing that springs to mind is some farming community. Since my settings undersea world is not described in as much detail as the overworld, let's open AD&D World Builder's Guidebook and generate a small kingdom. I will skip the actual rolls and provide you the result. Beralor is a small kingdom in the northeastern parts of the Aventian Ocean, on the continental shelf of northern Taeldo. It is comprised of only four towns of aquatic dwarves, with a king's seat in the capital of Halgalor. The Darkback clan is notorious for its miners and smiths. They mine ore on the continental slope and use divine magic granted by Moradin to smelt it without fire and turn it into bronze weapons armor and tools. Smaller clans include the Leatherhide clan, who are adept seaweed farmers and crab herders, the Coralstone clan, expert soldiers, the Warm Spear clan, skilled artisans and builders, and several other clans. The dwarves maintain friendly relations with scattered villages of merfolk, aquatic halflings and Karkanax, crab-like humanoids. The young high king Hudrami Darkbike passed away three months ago without an heir, which is interpreted by many as a bad omen. His sister, Regent Vadwalin Darkbeck, formally rules the kingdom now, with the assistance of the councillors, 
but the chieftains of other clans are trying to gain enough influence to become the new high king. This is the time of unrest, as uneasiness permeates the dwarven society. Now let's think about how to introduce the turning point of our adventure. Seaweed farms of the Leatherhide clan in the town of Abamor attract the attention of a clutch of water drakes, who kill three dwarven farmers to display power. The drake leader, who calls himself Asanku, demands monthly tributes of rock salt and bronze, threatening to kill more farmers if the demands are not met. The player characters, who can be either members of the Leatherhide clan, clanless dwarves, or adventurers or mercenaries hired by the Leatherhide uh, chieftain, must travel to the capital, deliver the message of the drake leader, and ask for help. This opens up many opportunities. The characters could ask the regent for help, find military assistance of the Crawlstone clan, or just visit the Leatherhide clan home in the capital to ask for advice. Technically, this is enough to start an adventure, or at least generate the characters, if you do not want to plan things out thoroughly. From here, I could either work out the different NPCs with whom the players will have to interact, but I would like to try rolling some turning points again for each of the options I have outlined, even if this won't produce something that will be used as is in the game. It should help me work out the motivations and goals of all the parties. Let's roll up a turning point for approaching the regent. Mystery, none. Social, meta, character steps down. Action, rescue. Mystery, the plot thickens. Social, none. Let's roll up a turning point for the Coral Stone clan. Personal, none. Social, a high energy gathering. Social, standoff. Mystery, it's a secret. Tension, time limit. Let's roll up a turning point for visiting the Leatherhide clan home. Social, enemies. Tension, conclusion. Tension, none. Social, liar. Social, argument. Now let's interpret this all together. The regent Wad Wallin Darkback grants the characters an audience, unless they mess up majorly, but she does not provide any assistance and still she consults with Borin Darkback, a high priest of Dumathoin. She believes this to be an important decision, but feels too incompetent to make the decision herself. And, uh, well, she really is uh, incompetent. The high priest, however, is absent as he had just left the city to oversee the construction of a shrine to Dumathoin in a merfolk village of Selana, where dwarven minorities feel left out without a place of worship. If the PCs travel to Selana, they find Borin's hippocampus uh, chariot on the way. The chariot is empty, with no sign of the priest. If they go to Selana, they find out that the local dwarves and merfolk are not even aware of the shrine being constructed. I, as a GM, should introduce some clues both in the chariot and in the village to point the characters to the right direction. I do not know what the right direction even is yet. If the characters decide to go ask the Coralstone clan for assistance, they find the clan home closed. If they persuade the guards to let them in or manage to sneak or bribe their way in, they find that the entire clan has gathered to watch the chieftain Dorduk Coralstone fight Norg Coralstone, a contender to the status of the chieftain. While Dorduk seems to be a better fighter, Norg is willing to employ underhanded tactics. Before the fight commences, Norg asks the characters to either poison Dorduk before the fight or steal a magical ring of protection from the clan's priest of Klanget Din the dwarven deity of battle, to give him an edge in the fight. However, they only have two hours to do that. Should the PCs help Norg win, he promises them to send soldiers to kill the drakes. However, then he cites the orders of the regent queen to keep the soldiers in the capital to suppress possible civil unrest. The characters will have to go to the regent to ask her to allow sending some of the soldiers to the town and only then she will say that she has to consult the priest. However, even though the characters seemingly have taken the longer way, they obtain Norg Coralstone as a contact, or maybe even a patron, 
as he feels indebted to them. Maybe they will even persuade him to ignore the regent's orders. Finally, if the characters decide to go to the Leatherhide clan home, they find the chieftain Kodar Leatherhide on a clan-wide feast. If the PCs ask him for help, he asserts his authority as a chieftain and tells them that the drake's demands make no sense. What do they need metal for? What do they need salt for? He refuses to provide any assistance, claiming that his presence and attention are required in the capital, as the Leatherhide clan will become very influential soon. In truth, he is the one who cooperates with the drakes, using them to distract forces of the regent queen and the Coral Hyde clan to become the king himself. The drakes actually are subservient to whale tracks, a brine dragon that layers on the continental slope near the mines. Salt is his favorite food, and bronze is very valuable, triggering his innate draconic hoarding instinct. He supplied Coder Leatherhide with drakes to use as a diversion, in return receiving the demanded items for his hoard. How does the missing high priest fit into all this? Perhaps he is yet another agent of the dragon, or maybe an actor of yet another side, maybe even a shapeshifter. At this point his exact nature and motivations are not that important, but they can be adapted to whatever route the player characters decide to take, bringing them closer to the plot's conclusion. I think this adventure sounds decent enough. There is a lot of social interaction, different factions and motivations. There's still some holes to patch up. What are the potential rewards for the player characters? What if they do not even care? But all of that can be fixed. And remember that this is not a railroad plot. It's just an outline of an ongoing situation that can serve as a source of for various side quests, entirely different plot lines, and can be integrated with the PC's backstories. In any case, players always find a way to come up with their own adventures and ways to solve problems, so do not feel too strictly limited by what you have written beforehand. The NPCs so far aren't very thoroughly defined, but they can be fleshed out in more detail once the game actually starts and they become relevant. Not fleshing them out beforehand allows you, for example, to tailor some NPCs to trigger certain disadvantages, advantages and quirks of your player characters. Aside from all that, I'll have to list all the optional rules to be used in the game. Fortunately, this list is almost always the same, and I also have to provide the players with other information for character generation, such as the starting point value and available racial templates. Since most characters are likely to be aquatic dwarves, I have to point the players to the equipment scaling rules from GURPS Love the Companion 2. Pyramid 326 should be essential reading for its GURPS Phantom 5 article that covers all the underwater rules. It might also be a good opportunity to use rules from GURPS Social Engineering. It's a very good book that I don't use very often. I should also point out that Metal Gear will most likely be made of bronze, and the rest of the gear will be made of bones, coral, horns, stone and other materials that do not rust. Since the game will have the characters travel between settlements, it might be a good idea to come up with some random encounter tables to spice up the experience. I don't think that a random weather table is required as the game is set underwater. And that's it. I hope that this example showed you how you can approach adventure creation and preparation in GURPS when you have no idea where to start. But you should keep in mind that this is only one approach, and there are many, many more. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.